a lot of us, right? So I underwent this process of doing my uh, Herza Fellowship. So this work is based on that. So it's an e-mentoring model for academic and professional development. Now, uh, to begin with, how many of us here have either been a mentee or been a mentor to someone? Please raise your hands. Pretty much a lot of us, okay? What I want now is, I want all of you to, whoever is sitting on the respective table, to talk to the person sitting next to you and talk about um, what, why do you think mentoring is important? And, uh, and what did you particularly get out of it as a mentor or as a mentee? Yeah, stop talking. <laughs> you, can, you can join Mark. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh, Let me just bring you guys back. I know there were some really interesting and engaging discussions happening, and I wish I had a lot of time to actually hear all of them. But let's just try and bring that back here. So there are, there are three components here. We have a mentor, we have a mentee, and of course the organization they belong to. So now based on the discussions you guys had, can you sort of uh, throw back some of the ideas around what kind of benefit do you think it can have for the mentor or the mentee or for the organization? Just, just say things from your respective tables. I think it's help and support. Support. Help and support from, from each other. Um, you know, regardless of what, what side you're on, we all, always need help. So We're it's always a, learning, so it's sharing. So it's a mutual support and sharing. What else? Um, help professional development. That's perfect. The professional development, more of a mentor or a mentee, or both? Both. Yep, professional development. Because it's more like peer to peer than student. Yes. What else? Anything interesting from this side? What's that? Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think um, I've been on both sides. I'm just kind of always on both sides. Um, I believe in having a mentor because it shortcuts learning 
True. A lot of the mistakes you make by yourself, your mentor can help you mm -hmm. overcome. Accelerated growth, yeah. And yeah. in terms of mentoring, mm -hmm. to me, that's kind of a plowing back by saying, okay, I've had a mentor helping me to overcome hurdles and mm -hmm. and um, you know grapple with mistakes in a virtual space rather than mm -hmm. <laughs> you know make the mistakes there on the ground. Great. And so giving back as a mentor is literally that, just returning the favor. Fantastic. So these are some of the few important points, and we have touched upon them. And around, there are a lot of benefits. Literature talks about several benefits for the mentor, for the mentee, and for the organization they belong to. Something as simple as fostering retention, improving productivity, and developing new leaders from the point of view of the organization. Some of the points which you all touched about, mentee is accelerated promotion rates and career mobility, improved career satisfaction, reduced job stress. Interesting thing around mentor is the personal satisfaction, the joy of giving back and shaping the ne next generation, and probably also recognize for the capacity development. So these are some of the benefits mentors and mentees can get out of this relationship. Now, because this talk is about e-mentoring, it basically happened very, very organically. So I started this relationship with this person who was my mentor for Herdza Fellowship. And this person was based in a completely different city, different country. He was based in Sydney, in the University of New South Wales, and I was here in Auckland. Different time zone, different locations, right? We started up this process, and how it organically sort of resulted into us coming up with this little model called e-mentoring model is what I'll be sharing with you all of you today. Now, what exactly is e-mentoring? Now, mentoring is actually a relationship where technology is employed between a more experienced person to act as a guide, role model, teacher, support of a less experienced person. Now, when we talk about technology is employed, there could be a range of technologies. Something as simple and basic as email, to a discussion forum, to instant messaging, to video conferencing, file sharing, and things like that. And the interesting thing about this technology part here is it keeps on evolving, as some of you shared as well in the morning as well. It keeps on changing and evolving with time. And as a result of that, in the literature, we don't have massive amount of research which has happened towards the side of e-mentoring. People are coming up with the concept of things like S-mentoring, social media mentoring, mobile mentoring, and things like that. Now, in this case study, I'll very quickly talk about what exactly we did, how we did it, and what were the outcomes for me personally as a mentee here. So this was based on the context of doing Herdza Fellowship, which is a two years process. Um, the mentee creates a, a portfolio which is based on your reflection about your teaching and learning. And uh, it's a roughly two years process where mentee was based in Auckland and the mentor was based in Sydney. What we did here was we started creating archive of these video meetings. We had these focused, dedicated meetings. We initially started with Skype and then we moved on to Google Hangout on Air because it very interestingly gives you an integrated YouTube link of your focused meeting, which you could use as an archive to then further reflect upon. And I don't know how many of you have experienced something like when you go for a really, really powerful meeting with someone, and you think that you've have, you have gained so much out of it. And then you have to tr try and capture your thoughts in terms of based on your scribble notes and things like that. And you feel that I was sort of trying to play between what I've scribbled down to what I've sort of absorbed from that meeting. You know? And literature shows that there's a huge amount of evidence about false memories between interpreting something which happened in a completely different way. You know, so that sort of comes in the way of proper, true, authentic reflection. So having an archive, having a, a live document, which is a closest match to what exactly happened between the meeting can be really, really supportive for doing a deeper reflection in the right direction. So that, that's something which is interesting about this particular model. This process was sustained over 18 months time, and we had these almost on an average once a month focus meeting of around 20 minutes, which was used as an archive. This is what you can see. It's all available on YouTube. Uh, we have part of it, we can make it public. You have a choice. If you want to make it public for others, you can do that. If you want to keep it private just for yourself, you have an option of doing that as well. 
So here you can see the series of chats um, focused videos between Chris and myself, January, February, and we covered range of topics. So initially this process started up as doing just the fellowship, but it sort of evolved into discussing and chatting among a lot of other things as well. So uh, we are trying to ground it and link it with a Cobb's learning cycle. And what happens in, in Cobb's learning cycle is it's based on having a concrete experience. And once you have a concrete experience, you observe and reflect on that. Now, based on your observation and reflection, you create a concrete hypothesis, which is then tested into new learning environments. Yeah? So in this particular situation, what we did was we had this initial discussion, which was a focused discussion captured on uh, through Google Hangout on Air in the form of a YouTube video which was archived and based on this archive the mentee and the mentor both reflected and prepared for the, the next step which moved down to the next discussion or engagement so it's almost like a triangle but it keeps on expanding it's like a it's like a triangular thing which keeps on going bigger and bigger and bigger with time hopefully reflecting more of professional learning and development happening with time as it passes by here is basically the linkage with, with the COP cycle, which I just touched upon. Components such as discussion, archive, reflect, and prepare are linked with these components. And eventually, once you finish these three things, it results into a new discussion where you test and discuss the new ideas in the next meeting. Now, the benefits of this were you, first of all, have a shareable artifact, which could be shared between the mentor and the mentee. It's really suitable for self-reflection. To give you an example, I was in that 18 months period, I sort of engaged into few applications, things like applying for teaching awards, applying for promotions and things like that. My um, teaching awards application was substantially different from you know, the application which we discussed together. You know? and, and that archive which we created, the 20, 20 minutes archive, around that application, the feedback which Chris shared with me, had a lot to do with the, the next version which I created. So I think it could be implemented in various other forms, such as you know when you're having a supervisory meeting where you have a PhD supervisor somewhere in Europe and the student is somewhere in Australia or New Zealand, or, or for that matter, within New Zealand in different places as well. And that archive can have a strong potential in moving in the right direction. Accurate representation, that is really, really important. What, so sometimes we think that, what exactly did he mean? What was said? You know, you, you rely purely on your memory. You don't have to do that. You have a, a closest representation of that. And it facilitates low barrier in the entry point of the next meeting, you know? If you're meeting after a month's time, you're like, what was it which we discussed last time? You just have a few one or two notes. However, when you have an archive like that, it really quickly glances through it and it gives you a very easy entry into the next time point as well of the meeting and discussion. Some of the effects. I was successful in winning Buckland's teaching award, getting a successful promotion, of course completing my fellowship, and we are engaged in several collaborative research work. So this is just a little example. That it doesn't necessarily have to be all these positives here as well, but if I have to reflect back on that process, I would believe that it really, really helped my reflective skills to be able to um, discuss new ideas and implement and reflect on those ideas. So in summary, I'm still ahead of my time. In summary, it was, it, it was a beautiful relationship where technology was employed to facilitate the process of reflection and professional development. And it worked out really, really well for me, personally, specifically. And going forward, what I'm doing is I'm in the process of mentoring three Hurza fellows. And all three of them are based in Australia, and they're in different disciplines. And we are using similar model. We are, we are using exactly the same Google Hangout on Air, creating those archives, reflecting on them. So it's beneficial for them, as well as it's beneficial for me as well, a, a, as a mentor this time. So the roles have changed a little bit, but I see a power and potential it has for making us a more reflective person, and for our own personal growth and professional growth as well. Well, with that note, I would like to really thank you all for your attention and open to questions.